Yes, guys, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Again, we will explain why the name change in the next few videos. But up until then, we have just watched at the Stamford Bridge, Chelsea nil, Arsenal one. Lewis, talk to me. Charity FC, yeah, again, in it. Like, I, I don't know how to explain how we turned this game onto our heads, but it's literally the biggest howler that I've seen. And it's the third win in a row against us. Third win in a row. Their first win at our ground since 11-12. And at least in 11-12 when they beat us, I mean, we kind of deserve to lose. Our whole defence having a howl and Robin Van Persie battered us. This one was just a calamity between Kepper and Jorginho. You can sprinkle a bit of Zoom attacks into it all you want, but it was kind of between the pair of them. And it's up to you what you want to debate. I still say, personally, Kepper should have been in between the goal. I don't know why he stepped out of goal in that situation. I also see that Jorginho should have also kept his head up a bit more. It's a bit of both, but do not tell me it is simply Jorginho and do not try to scapegoat Jorginho yet again for this either. But even if we want to talk about the one situation in general... We just talk about the same thing that always happens with us. We're shit in the attack. Yep. We are always shit in the attack. Regardless of the issue with Kepper and Jorginho, we could have been 1-0, 2-0, 3-0 up by then. Mount had a string of chances. Kai Havertz had that brilliant one-on-one -on -one chance and he skied it. We cussed out Werner for that. We cussed out Morata when it happened years ago. Kai Havertz has to hold the same corn in my opinion 100%. too. Yeah. And it's not me trying to scapegoat anyone either. It's just the same problem that we see time after time after time again, and it rears its head. We are shit at finishing. My prediction for this game, right? I said 2-0 Chelsea. If we take our chances, 6-0 Chelsea. Because we always make chances like that. We always make good chances in games. We never finish them. It's the same thing that always happens. And what happened yet again today? Fucking didn't take our chances. Olivier Drew at the end. Callum Hudson Odoi skying everything. Kai Havertz not stretching for that Reese James cross in the second half. Time after time after time again, it is the finishing. And overall, we were poor. That's why I'm saying individuals in general, but I'm not going to scapegoat anybody. Defensively, we were poor. I think it was just Thiago Silva clearing up mistakes for the most part. And even he was getting done towards the end of the match. Kurt Zuma looked like he was, he was going to lose the ball every single time he touched it. It looked like he was on two left feet. Fucking Chilwell and James weren't even that bad, to be honest. We had the ball getting sprayed out wide the whole time. And they tried. But as soon as you give Arteta a goal, what do you think he's going to do? Sit 11 men yeah. and his whole family tree behind the goal and then just hold it out because that's all he fucking knows. And then it was easy for them. We handed them the game on a silver player. Jorginho... Probably his second worst game of the season other than the West Brom game. But these howlers happened. I feel like his performances have been so good this season. I can look past it, but it's still a poor performance regards. So I'm going to call it out for what it is. Front three. Already said, Mount had a poor game. Havertz had a poor game. Pulisic was limping most of the match. I, I, I don't know how he wasn't the first guy to come off, yeah. especially with the FA Cup final in mind. And this is the thing now. That's the, that was the thing that kind of gets me the most. I feel like the team weren't even playing to their full potential because of the Absolutely. FA Cup final. It looked like they were just sitting there playing at about 50-60% intensity that in the to save their, their bodies. Especially Pulisic because the injuries as well and I understand it. My only question is, and I don't like questioning Tuchel's lines up because it's, changed, because it's worked so well for us throughout the last four months. This one was high risk but without the reward. And that's what the problem is. And as... I'm not going to blame Tuchel for it either. I feel like he's the one that gets the least absolved out of all of it. Because yeah. for me, it's like he gave, Ke he gave Kepa that confidence in him and he didn't repay it on the pitch. Billy Gilmore, I thought he tried, but as soon as they got the goal, it was just sideways from him and Jorginho. It's because there was three men on them every single time yeah. they're on the ball. Neither of them could do anything if they wanted to because we handed the game to Arsenal. And it's the same thing as the last time. Three games in a row that they've beaten us. This is their, this is their fucking trophy. We're going to have all of yeah. them dancing on our graves now. We'll win the Champions League. But like, yeah, we beat the Champions League winners. And they will celebrate it because they are shadow dwellers. And all they're living off is fucking wins against us. Happens every single time. And I was hoping today would be the one day where we wouldn't actually turn into bozos. But Charity FC rears his ugly head yet again. I say all of this. We'll probably win the FA Cup. We'll probably be Aston Villa on the last day too. But we've now dragged this top four race to the last day, in my opinion. If we had beaten Diesel and beaten Leicester City, we could have rested everybody with the Champions League in mind. Bring out the academy players and give Giroud his last league game for Chelsea. But here we are. Now the Villa game means a lot to us. Now the Leicester game means double as much as it already meant to us. And my worry is already we aren't going to be able to play at the same intensity as a Leicester City who just lost the FA Cup final to us. 
So we've just made this entire job so much harder for us and we didn't need to do it. And that's because we were lazy and we came with no intensity for the game. It was fucking embarrassing from start to finish. Exactly. Once again, guys, Chelsea making their own pressure. And so what would you say, last thing, Lewis, what is Tuchel's best bet for the cup? Is he going to get Kepa or do you think today oh, no, has just no, been... No, no, no. Kepa don't play another game for the rest of the season, in my good, fucking opinion. Good, good, good. Like, I get... I see I was resting with the Arsenal with the Leicester game in mind for Arsenal and I didn't mind the rotation either because yeah. our depth is good they just didn't repay it for him we were again poor in the final third we were again sloppy in midfield and then we just give him the easiest goal in the fucking world absolutely embarrassing but here we are Arsenal have another fucking thing to celebrate over us even though they're going to finish 10th in the league table <laughs> every time it's us giving them something to prop themselves up with but if it keeps Arteta in the job then I guess we win in the long run exactly so yeah <laughs> was it worth it Arsenal fans guys this is Chelsea Fan TV. Again, we will explain the name change. Follow all of Lewis's socials, Carefree Lewis G, on most things, right? Yep, and I'm yep. off to drink some bleach. Bless. <laughs> that. Follow me, at Blues Bro Joe. This is Chelsea Fan TV. Up the Chels if you can still manage it, and I'll see you soon. Yes, guys, this video is sponsored by OneFootball. Check it out. The link is down in the description below. OneFootball is the most reliable app you can have for all footballing news regarding any team in Europe, be it club football, be it international football. The one place you can go for the most reliable football news is the OneFootball app. So, guys, check it out. The link is down in the description below. Check out all sorts of news regarding your favourite club. Check out the Transfer Indicator app on OneFootball to check out the reliability of it. But check out the OneFootball app, the most reliable app for your footballing news. It's down in the description below. Check it out, guys.